<laughs> All right, ladies, you want to say hi to your True Life family? Hi! We love you. Hope everybody's doing well. I've been praying for you. We miss you guys. Hello there, True Life family. Um, it's a little weird. I've not done this before, but since we can't meet tomorrow in person, um, it doesn't seem like we can have a lo lot of personal contact in coming days. I wanted to be able to share with you some things. Um, going to miss you tomorrow. Uh, thank you to all of you that have called or texted, emailed, shared praises. There's been some neat things happening in different lives and I value hearing those. Um, miss you guys uh, and I'm glad for all of you who I have been able to talk to in the last few days and look forward to talking to all of you, the rest of you um, in coming days as well. I'm sitting in my home office, want to welcome you in. Um, this is where I spend a lot of my time studying, preparing teachings, making phone calls, doing announcements and things. Uh, probably no surprise to you that besides my books that I use to study and um, prepare with, it's an office that is decorated with coffee mugs, fossils, western novels, um, filmmaking books and memorabilia. Uh, it's kind of a little place of refuge for me as well and I'm glad that you can join me here right now. So I, you know, mentioned the fossils. It's something that as you know, if you've known me in any length of time, is a, a passion for me. I, I love looking for them. I, I love evidence for Genesis Flood, uh, which validates the whole creation account of Genesis. And a couple reasons. It, it lets me know that I can trust the Bible from the first pages to the last. And that's something, especially in times like this, I need to know. I need to know that my God's promises are true. And the second thing it does is it reminds me of the flood and how God, even in the times of disaster, the times when sin's effects on the world are most rampant, God has prepared an ark of salvation. And when I was reading Hebrews 11:7. it says, By faith Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. And then in Genesis 7:16, it says, Those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. I, I love that dual picture. That God told Noah what to do. In faith, Noah obeyed, not by sight. Uh, stepped out of the bounds of anything that human wisdom would say was reasonable. He built the ark, he stepped into the ark, and it was God that shut him in and God sealed him in. It was God's hand. And God has provided for us an ark in Christ, and we can never forget that. By faith, we enter into Christ, and Christ enters into us. And it's Christ's work, God's work, that shuts us in, not our own. This is awesome, because in our weakness, we could never earn our way to God. And it is his work that is perfect. It is Jesus who hung on the cross and said, it is finished. And it is that work that we simply trust in and obey that seals us for eternity with God. And it's something we need to know in these times that are hard. These are unprecedented times for us, for our generations. And we represent multiple generations in our fellowship. Um, I thank God that if we are to be isolated, that we're isolated in such a beautiful place. We can step outside and walk. We have beautiful scenery around here. It is quiet. I, my heart goes out to those that are shut in and confined apartments, neighbors they don't get along with, views outside their windows of cement walls. Uh, we need to pray for them. That kind of isolation can wear down. We are so blessed. Um, I'll share a picture of the view outside of our yard and just as I talk here, but though I'm concerned for my family that's not here, uh, my extended family, north and south, 
I thank God that I am surrounded by family that I love and I am together with in this home. Again, pray for those that are not surrounded by people that love God and love them, that are maybe confined in tense situations or relationships, people that have loved ones out of the area that they're worried about and can't be with. I want to share with you some things that will be repetition to the emails I've sent out, um, but I can hopefully bring it all together right now. Stan and Reuben and I have been talking and in regular contact since before the actual shut-in that occurred for Monterey County last Tuesday. And um, we, we feel like God has been giving us some things to do, and we believe that first and foremost that responsibility is to set up, up a system, a, a means by which our fellowship, this True Life family, can stay strong and connected. Uh, this is very important because it's that principle of putting on your oxygen mask first. If this does continue for a long haul and if things get a lot worse, there's going to be a community around us in Lockwood, Bryson, Plato, Fort Hunter, Liggett, Halone, the Interlake Corridor, the lakes, that desperately needs help, spiritual wisdom, counsel, peace, uh, an answer to fear, an answer to their questions about their mortality. We need to be a healthy body and able to do that. We need to take care of each other. We need to stay connected with each other. And so in light of that, of establishing a strong fellowship and maintaining it first, um, I have done the following things to implement Reuben and Stan and my decisions. Again, some of this has been in the email. I'm just going to go through it. I have started to send out regular updates using the True Life email list. I will use this for things that are more private to our fellowship. I'm asking you to let me know if you uh, through email if you have needs or if you have resources you can share. I've had people say I'm willing to go help someone with projects. I have, you know, different things. I will send those out within our fellowship. I have updated the phone directory and emailed it out to the fellowship. I'll talk about that more later. I have established a Dropbox account for True Life for people... Um, to email me video files that are too large uh, to upload to me video files that are too large to email or text. I'll talk more about that I I now. Um, I have established this True Life YouTube page. Not everyone is on Facebook, and I'm not going to pressure everyone to join Facebook. I will s post links to this page when there's new things on to the True Life Facebook page. Um, but it's, again, our belief we need to see each other and have a presence in each other's lives. That's why I'm welcoming you into my office right now. I intend to post regular video sharings. Um, I'll be soliciting videos from others in the fellowship to share here as well. Uh, I'm going to begin with the leadership and our worship leaders. I'm asking for songs from some of them and um, words of encouragement. If you have neat moments you'd like to share with the fellowship, uh, something you're doing in the isolation that's pretty cool. Take a picture, email it to me. Um, I'm going to put the best email for you to use. I set up a Gmail account for the church that will give us, I think, pretty smooth access through email. So the best email for you to use to send me pictures or small videos, uh, that's going to be right here in, on the screen as well. I'll put that email. Um, my personal email still works for those of you who have that. Um, at some point, I'm going to be contacting more people in the fellowship saying, hey, take a video, say hi to the fellowship, let us know how you're doing, let us see your smile, check in, and we'll just post those. Sometimes I'll embed them in the videos I share, other times I'll put them as standalones. Um, do remember, the YouTube page is a public page, it's not a private, so don't say anything in there that shouldn't be said before everyone and anyone. Um, we'll save that for our, you know, if there's personal needs or things more private, we'll save that for the church email list. Um, finally, as part of uh, this, I guess going back to the videos, um, if you do have a longer one you want to send me, email me. I'll send you a file request from Dropbox. You can upload it to me that way. And we got a couple gigs there, so that's not going to be an issue as far as size. And then um, if you have a YouTube account, you can watch YouTube without an account, but if you have one, right down here at the bottom, I've always wanted to do that, YouTube people do that, right down here, subscribe, 
um, click on the subscribe and then make sure your settings are such that um, you get a notification if there's a new post. But again, when I have new posts, I'll send it out via uh, our church email list and I'll put it on the church Facebook page. And then finally, as part of this first stage, I am going to be trying to be in contact with each of you every few days. Um, first choice will be voice. Um, sometimes it'll be an email, a text. Um, just want to check in with you. Want to hear your voice, see how you're doing. Um, then in the coming week and weeks, once this has taken a while to get all this established, once this is rolling, then what we are going to do is begin to look at ways that we as a fellowship, the body of Christ in this region, can reach out to the communities around us. Uh, they need what we have. They need Christ. And they need people who can step into their lives with words of hope, encouragement, uh, tangible action. Um, we have a Christian heritage of running to the hurting. And um, I want to live into that moment. Like Esther, I believe, and I shared this at Sunday, um, like Esther, we are here for a time such as this. Uh, in the next couple days, I'll take last Sunday's teaching and put it onto YouTube. I need to just put a blank video screen over it since it's only audio. Um, but that'll be up there too if you want to listen to last Sunday through a v video medium. Um, I want to make sure we, like Esther, step into our moment. I don't believe it's an accident we're in this community. I don't believe it's an accident we are where we are. I don't believe it's an accident we have cultivated a strong fellowship of family and I want to be able to rise into this moment. I'll keep you posted in future emails, YouTube postings about how we can step into this moment as a fellowship but keep in mind for right now you are the closest contact someone has. You are the person someone who needs Christ's hope and help has. You know people no one else in this fellowship knows. You are in contact with people no one else in this fellowship are in contact with. Ask God to lead you and guide you as to why he's put you in the moment and the place you are. I want to then, in closing, address a, a couple issues. Um, some of it, again, I talked about last Sunday. I've touched on in emails. I want to put it together. I want to speak to you. Um, first is isolation. Now, not all of you are isolated. Some of you are in what have been deemed essential work environments, and you are still in contact with people. Um, stay safe. Be wise. Let your light shine. Uh, others of you are isolated, but you're with larger family groups. You get along great. Things are wonderful. Praise God. But we have a lot of people, even in our fellowship and certainly outside of our fellowship, that are isolated, are alone. Um, and they need love. They need to be reached out to. Um, here are some thoughts on isolation. It was God who first said, Genesis 2.18, It's not good that man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. It is God who created a family for himself. He created a family in us, the church, to spend eternity with, to share his love with. It is God who made us one body and reminds us over and over we need each other and we're only complete when we come together as a body and meet one another's needs. Community is from God and it's needed. So in this term, this is, this is a hard time. This goes against everything God's created us to be. We have a Christian history of Christians, a heritage of Christians in isolation who have thrived and grown in their relationship with God. We can do this. We are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Keep in mind if you think this is overdone or if this isolation isn't a big deal, not everyone's the same. Some people handle it far better than others. We living out here, are, we tend to be a more private people, a people more used to being a week away from town trips, a people more used to having our shelves stocked, a people more used to being alone, closing the gates at night, um, sitting by our fireplaces. Not everyone's like that. And we need to recognize that, to not judge, uh, to have compassion. Um, we may be in a great place of faith. There's others that are tremendously afraid right now for themselves or loved ones. Um, isolation can be dangerous, especially if it's coupled with fear. The enemy thrives in the darkness and the isolation. He takes the thoughts of fear. He takes the lies we believed. 
He multiplies them. He feeds on them. And if we aren't surrounded with a strong group of brothers and sisters in Christ and immersed in God's scripture and solid teaching, those thoughts start to run unchecked. As I said last week, fear cries loudly. It is a loud voice and it's hard to hear God's quiet voice when fear is the dominant voice in our heart. We need to take our thoughts captive to God's words. We have to be vigilant. We have to reach out to others if our thoughts start to turn in a dark direction. We need to fill our hearts and souls with his word and with his song. We need to, again, as I said, take captive those feelings, those fears. I've struggled with thoughts, fears. Where is this headed? What about the people I love? You know, what will happen if hospitals are overwhelmed? And I just have to keep reminding myself who I am in Christ. I'm his son. And he's not going to let go of my hand. And he has eternity sealed for me. Um, these are the things that we have to be aware of. Uh, the effects of isolation on us and on people around us. As I mentioned earlier, you should have received in your email list last night an updated phone roster for TLCF. Use it. I annotated on that roster what are cells, what are landlines, so you know which can receive a text. Um, you have Stan and Ruben and my numbers on that list as well. Use them. Uh, for those of you who maybe are watching this, if you aren't in our email list and don't have that phone roster, I'm going to put Stan and my numbers on the screen. Call us if you need to talk, if you want to get connected with our family. Uh, Ruben doesn't live in the area, so I'm giving you us the two local elders. Um, and we will reach out to you. Praise God, we are in a time when it's easy to stay in touch with people. The social media, the phones, the texts. But don't replace a voice with text. There are things that you will hear in someone's voice and places a conversation may go that you will never get in a text. Right now, um, we need hugs. We need that contact. And yes, Dave Landon, we need hugs. Anyway, um, we need that and we don't have it. We're isolated, but a, a voice is the hug of this moment. Call someone. I'm not saying texts are bad. I'm not saying a social media post is bad. But please, look for those people you can call. And maybe not just your close circle of family and friends, but the ones who might not be being called by anyone else. Um, that being said about the dangers of isolation, God has also shown us a biblical pattern for isolation. Jesus took time away from the masses and the busyness and the ministry to be alone with the Father and pray. He pulled his closest disciples aside and was alone with them. Um, he instituted a Sabbath rest for to step us, us to step aside from our work and draw close to him. We have an amazing opportunity in this time that we have been ordered to take away from people, in many cases away from work, Let's use it wisely. Um, I made a list of some thoughts. We have time to pray with a passion and endurance. We have time to devour God's word. We have time to fill our hearts and home with praise music. We have time to call and touch bases with others. We have time for many, an opportunity to draw very close to the family that we are shut in with. A time to rest. A time to confront and take captive to truth the lies and little ways we have to let the enemy creep into our thoughts and choices. Um, there's an expression, busy stands for being under Satan's yoke. And God, uh, Satan can make us so busy or we can choose to be so busy that we lose sight of the person in front of us. Um, social media pulls us from the person right in front of us. Many of us have a time right now that we may never have in our life again with our loved ones to just love on them, to come up with creative ways, play board games, um, read the Bible together, be silly, laugh. Laughter is good medicine. After talking about the brevity and the toil of life, Moses wrote to God in Psalm 90 verse 12, Teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. We need to number our days. We need to be a wise steward of our time. We need to not forget that we are in a spiritual war with a real enemy, to love the one we're with and to go closer to the one who gave us life. Keep God first. It's easy to crowd him out with social media, with news, with projects we've been wanting to get done. Keep him first. He gave us a Sabbath rest model of taking time away from everything to be with him 
and to put him first. Make sure we follow that model, not just on a weekly, but a daily basis. Give him our first. Everything else will go better for that. Keep him first. Keep the main thing the main thing. This is an amazing time. It's not one we would have chosen. It's not one we relish in. But we have an opportunity right now to grow incredibly as individuals, to grow in God's Word, and to reach out to people that might be more receptive to the answer to fear, to death, to depression. We have the answer, and it is Jesus Christ. And He lives within us, true life. Remember, the church is not shut in or locked down. We are the church. It has never been about a building. It is about the body of Christ. I want to finally uh, briefly address fear. It's not our friend. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Don't confuse fear with healthy caution and wisdom. There is a difference. God says not to be afraid or anxious. And he says not to test him. Be wise, but be led by his voice and his life in you, his spirit, not by fear. And know that he is far more concerned about the eternity of people on this earth than he is about our brief lives here. It's a balance that we each must find. We are each in different positions. We are each in different age categories, vulnerabilities because of health. We each have different people who depend upon us, who would have different effects if something happened to us. There's one audience we need to please, and that's him. There's one voice we need to obey, and that's his. We need to be who he's called us to be, and no one else, nothing more and nothing less. Take fear captive to faith and the truths of God promises. Fix your mind on him and let the peace of God flood you. Ask him for his will in these days. Be open to what he might say. We're the light of the world. May the world find him in us, not for the glory of true life, not that people say, oh, what wonderful Christians they are or people, but that people would say what an amazing God they have, that he gives them peace and hope in dark times. Godly music and praise is a massive frontal assault on the enemy. The music and praise are like light flooding a dark room and driving the darkness out. Replace fear with praise. Sing unto the Lord. Fill your house with that praise. Acknowledge His hand in every good thing in your life. Don't ignore your fears. Take them captive. Search His promises. Talk to your brothers and sisters in Christ about Him. Don't pretend you don't have fears or don't pretend or, or believe that they make you a weak Christian to admit you have them. We're broken people. We are hopeless against the course of this world without God. But we're not without God. We have Him and don't forget that. Admit those fears. Don't make friends with them. Let's talk it out. Let's go to the scriptures. Let's find the promises He has. Let's be a family to each other that we can be light into this world. Guard your tongue when you're talking with people. Talk more about our great God than about the virus. Be cognizant that people you're talking to, especially if they've lost loved ones or something, are going to say, well, how could a God be loving if he'd let this happen? How could God be all-powerful? These are questions we're going to get. Let's dialogue on it. How are you going to answer those? For me, the cross is the answer. I've come to a place I don't have to understand everything God does or doesn't do. If he was a God whom I could understand everything about, he'd be a God too small for me to trust my life. But I look at that cross and my favorite verse, those of you who know me, Ephesians 1.4, at least in this season of time, that before the foundation of the world in love, he had chosen, predestined those for adoption through the cross, through Christ. He loved us before he formed the earth. He loved us so much he was died brutally on a cross for us. All I want for my children when they don't understand why I do or don't do something is they trust me and trust my love. And I want to give that same honor to God. I don't understand everything. 
but I know he loves me, and I know he said he'll never leave me, and I know he has eternity in my hands, come what may. We need to trust that, walk in that. It's okay to say, I don't know. I don't. You know, just tell someone, I don't know. But here's what I do know. Here's what my God's done. Here's who he is. Here's how he changed my life. And here's what he's doing in my life in this moment now. I, I want to leave you with something right now to do in the next few days. And or next week, I'll start to send you some resources for good teachings online, place sites to look at. But right now, I'd encourage you to find a place that's live streaming or whatever it's called, download movies. Um, the movie Overcomer by the Kendricks brothers. Um, they're the ones who did Fireproof, Facing the Giants, War Room. Watch that movie if you haven't. Watch it again if you have. And then go into Ephesians chapters 1, 2, and 3 and spend some time looking for everything it says in there about who you are. Some of it will be a direct statement. Others will be things that you need to kind of extrapolate out. Who you know yourself to be in Christ, your identity in Christ, will define everything about you. Your choices, your actions, your thoughts all come from who you believe you are in Christ. Everything that you respond, everything comes from who at the core you know yourself to be. And I have found recently since watching that movie and the prodigal teachings at Hume that more and more when things seem out of control, I just look up and say, I am your son, Father. I am your son. And that means everything. I encourage you to spend some time in the next few days, maybe tomorrow, Sunday morning. Open your Bibles. If you're alone, if you're with others, do it as a group. Start reading through Ephesians 1, 2, and 3 and stop every time you find something that says who you are in Christ or you can draw something out of about who you are. Forgiven, adopted, loved, sanctified. It's just the beginning. Enjoy. Enjoy your time with your Father. Draw close to Him. You are loved. You're not alone. We're here. He's with us. We can do this. God bless each of you. I miss you. I can't wait till we gather again. But until we can, let us be like when the brothers came to Joseph in Genesis. And Joseph basically said, paraphrasing, what the enemy intended for evil, God, will turn for good. Everything around us is not good. Romans 8.28 doesn't say that. But it does say, for those who love God and are called, into it, called according to his purpose, he will work everything to good. Stay in touch. You got my number, you got my email. Call me, text me, email me, send me your pictures, send me your short video clips. Check your email often. It'll be the main way I stay in touch with the body at large. Look for your YouTube posts. And uh, let's do this. God bless you. Bye-bye.